tell how it's actually put together and how that works as like a part. It doesn't have to be like the final best draft, but it does have to be like something that you can look at and you can be like, that's how, these are all the parts, this is how you put it together and this is how it works. And it, this is how it like attaches to the fuselage and that, all, like everything like that needs to be. Okay, so we should probably model like part of the fuselage as well. Yeah, I can. We can also go talk to the fuselage. Did the fuselage shape change? I was just, I saw in aerodynamics that now. Oh, so yeah, the fuselage is it's still the rounded rectangle, but now it's like it's taller and thinner, but it's still same rectangle like same rounded corners they're still the same fillets that we had before it's just there so that'll just be like a little kind of stick off from the bottom and then we'll have like another section for the front yeah and the whole thing is exactly yeah yeah i see okay so i am sending you guys all the uh slide deck you would have to put the ribs in after you've laid up and with that we, because we have that wing twist, not every single rib is the same profile, which means it would be really hard or maybe even impossible to get ribs into the center section. Like, I, like best case scenario, or worst case scenario, you don't get them in at all. Probably realistic scenario, you get a side profile. Um, why, why can't we, why can't we use the so for using 10 meter spars, we have to basically Other destroy the albatross spare wings and get a spar out. Well, it's kind of like we're already ordering two. spars anyway. We might as well just order one that will make better. Why are we only up to three and a quarter inch? Half inch worse too. Okay, so then why would... The thicker it is, the more steep the plane is going Okay, we're well, trying to match in this plane at its structurally or evidently to our actual competition plane. So the, the wings shouldn't be flapping. I guess, yeah, the flapping part is fair. Talk about um, 10 millimeter versus the 3 quarter inch spars. Um, so, you're just saying the reason is so that we like stiffen them up. Yeah. And it's because we know from last year that even the center seal chain came out a bit stronger and heavy loading. Uh, or you need a different weight of fiberglass as well. We can put an extra layer of fiberglass. It's, yeah, we have some like in our workshop. Yeah, we can just make it. But, but you are not solving the problem from the wind to feel such joints being not as stiff. But only a spar is destructive. Unless we put fiberglass from the wind to the fuselage. I'm not like really opposed to like getting a stiffer spar. I just want to make sure that like it makes sense. So today we're in the shop looking at our example box for our plane this year. So the plane has to be able to be disassembled and put inside of a box before it goes out to the flight line. Uh, so we've mocked up that box out of foam here. And we also have some demo pieces in here that represent different components of the wing of the plane. So we've got like several wing sections in here. This is like a mock of the fuselage. So we're basically building more pieces to fit in this box to make sure our whole plane can be disassembled and fit into here. The flat sheet of foam like this, that's just the foam board that we have sitting right there. And then you can measure out your cord length, your 7.5, whatever. So this would be like your 7.5 here. And then from there, you're just gonna, you might even wanna score the inside with the knife, but you're basically just gonna fold it over on top of itself to get something that looks like this. Like that. And then you end up with your 7.5 inches here. And then you can maybe just let this go long and then cut off the excess there to get it to the right length. And that looks somewhat like an airfoil and it's good enough for our purposes here. Because the half, the half inch photo space should be a rectangle. Otherwise, you can put it over this way. Mismatch the bottom side. Okay, I guess we're drawing. Uh, it should be fine. Yeah, if you just fold it and then cut off this little you know, strip. It's, it's a dummy! <laughs> no, it's fine. If you're a dummy, it doesn't matter. It will be cool. Wait, sanity check. How long is this? Okay. Yeah, it's around. Uh, it's around the right. So it's D24 over B24. So it's. Okay, so then just look at D24 and B24. So that way we can just. Track down. It's just those, usually those two. Okay, so then we see where those ones come from. So we have a right, is this for, uh, this is still for takeoff, I assume, of like how much do we need to 
Well, okay, if we're talking about takeoff, then we're talking about completely different angle attacks since it's not going to zero. Yeah, no, no, that's what I'm saying. I have the max value yeah. at uh, 10 degrees. So, we just need to see what's in each slide. Yeah. Uh, someone drive the slides from, I guess, Sean, and so, then point out what's been done. We'll just read through it. Yeah. So, we're like slide six, essentially. Uh, so there are considerations on what we should do when we are um, when we are interfacing our mounts with the fuselage body. My name is Pranav Bhagwatla, and I'm the project manager for Design Build Fly. This week, we're working on preliminary design reviews, or PDRs, as we like to call them. You're going to see a preliminary design review is the first opportunity for the entire team to sit down with a group of experts from industry um, and scrutinize every decision that's been made on the plane so far and be given feedback on all the technical projects that we've worked on. A preliminary design review consists of scrutinizing every sub-team and all of the different projects so that we make sure that the decisions that we've taken so far are all based on data-driven facts and aren't arbitrary so that we can make sure that they all align with our system requirements. A preliminary design review also makes sure that we get ideas from outside of our thinking box, uh, from people who are not as invested in the design process as we are from the get-go, so that we can get an outsider's perspective and amalgamate all of those new ideas into a highly competitive aircraft that can maximize all of our mission scores and hopefully lead us to victory. Questions as we go along, because we'll be cycling through people. So if you have a question, feel free to like ask it. Um, well, definitely also, we do have a limited time, so we do want to respect your time here today. Um, we're going to talk first about aerodynamics and avionics propulsion. I judge them based off six criteria. So the first four are like the flight performance criteria, and most of these are prioritized for takeoff, because again, there's a M2 mission where you want to fly around with as much weight as you possibly can. And so obviously we need to be able to take off with that much weight. So being able to have an airfoil that can provide enough lift that we can actually take off is very important. Given that, we go through this uh, decision matrix and the clockwise airfoil, as we talked about earlier, wins out. Um, these are the weightings for the categories. I guess I'll just jump to the, the bottom line. Can you possibly build both the Clarkway and the S7055 since they seem to be essentially identical scores? and then see which one the pilot likes the best, and then go up to Paradise and fly it there, which will give you a close approximation of the difference in density and altitude. It's close enough to see all the conditions, but for a later, more detailed analysis, we will be... Okay, but later, you're going to be too late. You're going to have already committed to a wing. I definitely... Several iterations of the design you're building. I mean, yeah, clockwise two hundredths of a point better on that scale, but there's not a lot of gray space in your scale on how you did that. In the, you did that, and quite honestly, I believe your manufacturing difficulty is gonna ultimately wind up saving the day or ruining the day, more so than your Reynolds number or your density altitudes, and so what kind of margins should you be designing for based on pilot skill? Because you could, in theory, horse it off the ground or you could take a pound off or whatever. Altitude of the field in Arizona? Uh, 2,500 feet. For landing gear, axle location, for an for a RC plane or tail bagger, or in, in, in general, a straight winged general aviation plane, is that usually the axle lines up with the leading edge of the wing. The rotation of the plane is going to be a little bit hard. Sorry, so stalling is 12 degrees, and so your cruise angle of attack is. If you're in straight level flight, you're flying with the maximum possible payload that it's allowed to have it at what angle of attack is your own here. At Kink, we usually end up deciding that by trimming the plane on while flying it. I know you do, but what you have to design for some center, for some level of angle of attack. In other words, how much induced drag are you going to be carrying around in the sky that you Maybe you wouldn't have had to otherwise. Yes. And you also don't want to run out of control through it. Right. So I think there's a, I think you've got a good center of the envelope analysis. I'd love to see your, where does it start to fail? Where do you run out of control authority as a function of CG weight? This is our decision matrix for the tail geometry, kind of the overall shape. Uh, we had three options we were going with. The conventional twin tail and tri tail, based on when there was still discussion between single or two engines. Um, and they're also to decrease height, since we are put in 
the constraints of the box mm -hmm. for overall sizing. Like we mostly defined it as like if you're going to higher and higher groups of attack, how much of your vertical stabilizer is able to be used um, based on like how much gets collected. Oh, is it getting blanked? Yeah. yeah. Um, that's just mostly how we consider it. Problem. Yeah. Well, is there a way that you can predict with confidence what the runner will do based on the different how how much, that you how have? much pull the rudder can offset? Yeah, there is yeah, the rudder. Like, was there I was seconds? I was at full deflection and still going like yawing towards the. Um, the antenna. But my question now is on the on the science. Can the science help you confidently predict what I would, I think what we're saying is the efficiency criteria you have here. I'm not debating whether it's 0.15 or not. I'm just saying the definition of that should be help the pilot overcome the um, drag of the antenna. But in an area where you wanted to fly, you were negative margin. And so the question would be is, as compared to what he was flying, where he was arguably negative margin, the pilot couldn't do anything more for you. How do those ratios that he actually flew compare to what you're projecting right here, and are they better? And if so, how much better? Vision from the takeoff distance of 24 pounds was we're probably heavily not limited on takeoff distances with our weight restriction. And I will say the spar that we're designing for our wing can probably have one of us sitting on it and not be flipped. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not worried about that. No. That's a very testable thing. How, how fast are you going to go for this? Yeah, so you figured out what your stall speed is? Um, cruise speed is 24 meters per second. Stall speed for M2 is 11.36 meters per second. At that, at that wing loading? Yeah. It's sort of beyond a little ways beyond the high end of <laughs> of um, like a hot It's 10 times warmer. more than a regular RC plane. It's 10 no, times, 10 well, times more. Yeah. Um, order of magnitude. It's one order of magnitude higher. But, but I'm, not, I'm it's trying, not, it's not crazy. It's not totally crazy, but I'm trying to compare it with, you know, other things that are in the RC world. So it would be like having a, uh, a Warbird, a P-51 or something like that that is already a challenge to fly, but this is an overweight P-51. Yeah. <laughs> and I've flown an overweight P-51. And it, it crashed in horrible. It crashed in <laughs> We calculate the drag of the airplane plus the drag of the antenna using open VSB. And so the yellow column is the ASB. Uh, green is for 16 by 12 prop. Blue is 17 by 10 prop. And the red is the total drag of the airplane plus the Intended. This is the payload grounding storage box, and the walls need to be less than a quarter inch thick, thick to maximize space. This is quite literally because the dimensions we decided to work with barely fit the airplane. We don't have much room for air. If someone's thinking, like, how do we make this thing fail? Yeah. And by the way, when he says fail, what he means is crash. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And so when you do all of your calculations to figure out what the maximums are, aim for like 80% of that so that you survive. Because if you get 100% in one mission, but zero in the other two, or the other, or two of the three, you can't maximize your score. Your score is gonna maximize by completing everything. Yes, yeah. so it's like Formula One right? racing. You gotta finish to win. So, so it's, I don't know what to call it, the K factor or the whatever factor you wanna call it. Like, you're gonna have to calculate things to be about 80% or so, I'm just guessing from all of the maximums that you have to, to make sure that you survive. So from that standpoint, um, I think you guys actually did a, a pretty damn good job of uh, pulling together an integrated presentation. Yeah, there were isolated instances of failures to communicate even better. <laughs> it's really hard to spend the rest of your life doing that. So you guys are about practicing <laughs> um, The criticism is get your goddamn minutes right. <laughs> um, and that correlates to my other criticism, and that's I didn't see Jack Diddley about the report. And the report is the multiplier of your score, and yeah. you guys ought to have a pretty decent draft of all 100 pages or 60 pages or however many pages it is already. 
what you're really going to want is our comments on how to make that report better so that you maximize your hundred points because that is your multiplier. All the rest of the stuff we talked about gets multiplied by that. Whether it's out of a hundred or out of one, it's your multiplier and you want to maximize that. So that's my other criticism. Other than that, I think you guys did a great job. Thank you all so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Yep. Thank you, Mayor.